In 2012 May, I was in my constituency from where I was elected, Budidao Township, Uta Township in the city, Northern Rakhai State. Then there was a problem in the Southern Rakhai State, massacre of 10 Muslims. Then on June 8, there was a problem again in Northern Rakhai State. So until that day, I was there. So I flew from my constituency to Situe, then proceeded to Rangoon. Then the date is June 10, 2012. When I come in with the chopper from my constituency to the Situe, I saw this place, house are being burned in the Situe from the sky. I am the eyewitness what happened against Rohingya Muslim in Situe on June 10, 2012. After that in July, I went again to that area to double check what I saw from the skies through or not and to dig more. What I found is there are a number of Rohingya Muslim quarters and some Buddhist quarters but unfortunately, all Muslim quarters are burned. They spare. Oh, it's other thing. Or some quarters are nearby from the, the Rakhine people and the Muslim. So because as fire never discriminate, some houses are burned, I see. But not the whole district of uh, the Rakhine area. So that's very clear, show me that there is a systematic well-planned action against Muslim. Since then, I have been telling in the parliament. Again, we have another second problem in October, especially on the day of from Chapchu Island. A lot of boat people are feeling they are fleeing their uh, village because of the whole village was burned. You may see the satellite maps prepared by Human Rights Watch, October 2012. All our villages are burned. Then they fled to the city area, which they think is safer. Once they arrive in the city island, they are not allowed to land. And people are keep calling me. My parliament session is going to start. Within the minute, happening. So, as a lifetime, I told in the parliament, he said even now I received some call from Sitwe, these people are not allowed to land in because they flee the place they fire. So I called Home Minister of Myanmar government say, to take it action immediately, to save lives of people immediately. There was a woman so she delivered in the boat, no doctor, no medicine, no nurse. Before she arrived situated, the baby was dead. I mentioned in the parliament, nobody cared. Nobody listened. Not only ruling party members, but also opposition party, member of parliament. I didn't see any single sympathy for humanity, human being. I am not only working for a Muslim minority, I have been working for a Christian minority in my country who are Kachin, Karen, and Chin people. I feel I'm alone in the parliament. I feel I'm only person who are advocating, sharing information for the persecuted people. I never tell any story. I always try to highlight what is happening with facts, figure, but I raised my voice, yes, and my voice was broadcasted from the SkyNet TV channel, yes, but no action. So this is why I become more active, I speak more loudly, even there was a mass fire in Mongdo North, South, a police uh, the, a, a village was set fire. 
So they told us the bullet was set fired by the police. I share with the media. Because of that, I was given a threat. President sent a letter to the Speaker of my Parliament to arrest me. So I told the Speaker, oh, what did I do? I didn't do anything wrong. What I told to the media was what my people told me, what is my mandate, is my responsibility to share the people, the media, to tell in the parliament what is happening. I am representative of people. I didn't commit any crime. How come police, and not only police, but the president of Myanmar is blaming me? Instead of blaming me, it's better to investigate what's happening over there. So that is how I would like to express what is happening. So generally, let me conclude. Rohingyas are discriminated, not now, since General Newe occupied you see, the state power, coup state power in 1962. We Rohingyas are uh, not um, immigrant people, indigenous people of Arkan, ancient Arkan. In fact, Arkan was occupied by the promise. Arkan is not part of Burma today, Myanmar. It was independent kingdom. We are, we are citizens of indigenous people of ancient Arkan. But Arkan was occupied by the Burma and again occupied by the British. So Arkanese people, all Rakhine and Rohingya are suffering from, you see, or you see, war, you see, crime, or, so war crimes. Then they, of course, they may move from this place to Bangladesh, other way, because they, they need to survive. When British occupy again, uh, some combat, not only Muslim, but also Rakhine people, they return to their original homeland. We cannot say this is a migration issue. We cannot say this is an immigrant issue. So, but this general new ring government give a big heritage so that to discriminate against Rohingya and Muslim, this is the reason why they adopted 1982 citizenship law. I am the final victim of that law. So then after 2012, there are so many things, so many media are asked questions, even uh, opposition leader Dao Sen Suchi. Okay, we know. Myanmar government is doing these things. What's your opinion? But if I confess the story, I respect her a lot very much. Even I congratulate the victory of NLD on this November election. But still, I want to tell the truth. Before her landslide victory, during that time, what she responded to media is, it's not so satisfactory. So it's not so highlighted. But what she told is, uh, let me recall a few things. She told, okay, this is a question of rule of law. Okay, this is a witness of 1982 citizenship law. This law doesn't meet international requirements. And after that, uh, during her visit to the Euro, if I remember correctly, uh, he said, I can't do now because I'm not the government. I don't have any power. This is a responsibility of this government. What I can do? When I will be able to form a government, I will take it. Things to be good at. I think this is time now. The time comes now. So anyhow, but what I was very uncomfortable one of her worries, she told, which is totally opposite to my way of thinking. So she told to the media, I am not a humanist defender. I am a politician. I always speak, I'm not a politician, I'm a human defender. So although we have different direction of idea, but still I respect her. Still, we expect some hope from her new leadership because of landslide victory. So in 2015 uh, November, even before this election, as introduced by Smero, I apply for re-election. Not only me, it's a dozens of Rohingya representatives and also several other Muslim representatives. Neither USDB ruling party nor NLD opposition party nominate any single candidate. They're quite uh, uniform in that way. So therefore, I can't keep quiet 
What's wrong with Muslims? What's wrong with these people? They are peace-loving people. They are innocent people. They are indigenous people. We have been enjoying all citizenship rights since we got independent in 1948 from the British. Why discrimination? If we really talk about democracy, genuine democracy, we should not deny the rights of minority, irrespective of their race or religion. So anyhow, before the election, said my <coughs> paperwork application for re-election was denied. So let me emphasize and I will conclude and I will open the floor for the question and answer. So all levels of Union Election Commission of Myanmar denied my paperwork. They expressed the reason. They said, when I was born in 1965, my parents were not citizen. Therefore, I am not eligible. I call it this a laughable burgers. My parents were citizens of Myanmar, as well as you see, long resident indigenous people of Arkan. They didn't even check it. I know what they didn't check. If they check it, they have to accept it. So the reason is they want to reject me according to their policy. Because I feel that they want to stop my voice to <coughs> persecuted people. They want to, to they want a Muslim free parliament. They don't want any Muslim to be elected. Because anti Muslim sentiment, anti Muslim issue is used as a tool for election. Especially, especially my former USDP party. But for NLD, not much. But only one thing I realized is they didn't even nominate any single Muslim, although there are so many Muslim members, party members, are, have been working seriously for a long time for our party. That I noticed. And the, as election commissions deny my paperwork, and the all upper level, including the union election level, which is the highest level, they deny, and they didn't give me any uh, chance to, to, to defense, but they will keep saying, my parents were not citizen. But in fact, my father was born in 1980. He was very senior citizen of Myanmar, senior than the current president of Myanmar, very senior than speaker of the parliament. If they are eligible to run for the election, why not me? It means, it means what I feel is, for 1982 citizenship law, there is two kind of interpretation, double standard. For Rohingya, for Muslim, for other minority, they interpret one way. For other groups, they interpret another way, which is discrimination, human rights violation. In fact, my parents were holding same Union of Myanmar citizenship card, same as what the President and Speaker of Parliament holding and their parents were holding. Same thing. I have all documents, but as I said earlier, I didn't get a chance to defend. He said, we don't have to see your documents your appeal was dismissed. Therefore, even before the election, I called this election will not be free of fear because more than one million voters who are Rohingya Muslim in Northern Rakhine State, they were disenfranchised and excluded from the politics and their candidates are burned from the election. So it's, it's not a joke, not a question of one person 10%, 100%, question of more than a million people were excluded, disenfranchised. So therefore, I call it it's neither inclusive nor credible. It should be taken as a serious matter. So then, after the post-election, I really congratulate Myanmar people because they defeated dictatorship which is also one of the, our aim. NLD has a big you see, victory over the dictatorship on November 8th. So therefore, I would like to request all of 
this auspicious audience to speak through your channel to reach this my message to the Congress, White House, all stakeholders in the world. Just to take care of, to note this issue. Because Rohingya should be enfranchised again. All fundamental rights, including citizenship rights and political rights, must be restored, must be returned to, to our people so that we can enjoy not only majority but also all or including minority and what can recognize genuine democracy. As I said earlier, in genuine democracy, not only uh, benefits for the majority, although majority can rule, rights of minority must be respected. When I met President Jimmy Carter in my country, also he called it, in genuine democracy, it's no way, if we exclude the rights of minority, that could, could not be genuine democracy. So therefore my message to all of you, to honorable or persons here, please send this message so that the NLD leadership, Dong San Suu Kyi, now it's time to prove that she will implement a genuine democracy. She and her party will show the world, will show the world sorry, how, what kind of democracy she will implement, what kind of all-inclusive and credible you see, uh, election in the near future. So for, for Rohingya, citizenship rights are more important than this election and political rights. So the most important thing is Rohingya rights must be returned. They must be recognized officially by law. They are citizens of Myanmar. And all discrimination must be ended. So that is my message to all of you so that that message could reach to the all world stakeholder and to reach to our forthcoming new government so that we in, in our country, Myanmar, everybody can enjoy with genuine democracy. Thank you so much.